Ecuador's president, Daniel Noboa, made Ecuadorians furious after he said this. I invite you to work as hard as we are working in the government, the same amount of hours, and I'm sure that they will buy various plates of food. They will have an entrance, a plate of hard, and a postre. Yikes, that was not a good thing to say. So there's a few things we have to look at from a not a president, real Ecuadorian perspective. And what do I mean by real Ecuadorian? Well, that's something you'll only understand once you reach the end of the video. But first, let's look at the tax increase itself, since it is important for anyone visiting Ecuador or living in Ecuador. And it is, of course, the reason why we're having this conversation in the first place. The IVA, or value added tax, is set to increase on April 1st, 2024. It will go up from 12 to 13% permanently, as established by Congress. But due to a presidential decree, it will temporarily go up to 15% at least until 2027. This increase, of course, is to help secure more funds to combat crime and to help reduce the national debt. The items and services that will experience this increase are as follows. One, a few foods in the basket of goods will have a VAT increase. Among the foods that have VAT in this basket are ice cream, cookies, snacks, soluble coffee, sodas, fruit juices, soft drinks, jellies, dressings, mayonnaise, and tomato sauce. On the other hand, there are 94 foods in this basket that have 0% VAT, so consumers will not have to pay more with the new law. These are the foods most consumed by Ecuadorians, among which are rice, flour, oats, bread, meat, chicken, eggs, milk, sausages, tuna, cheese, oil, fruits, vegetables, legumes, grains, and tubers. Two, eating in restaurants and cafes will be more expensive. The food services that have a VAT rate are breakfasts, popular and executive lunch, traditional prepared food, prepared dishes, fast food, burgers and sandwiches, hot drinks, and prepared desserts. As an example, an executive lunch that costs $4.25 pays a VAT of 51 cents today. That is a final value of $4.76 for the consumer. When the VAT increases to 13%, the final value for that lunch will be $4.80, and at 15%, it will be $4.89. 3. Basic Services Citizens will not have to pay more for basic services since they have a 0% VAT fee. The services that are considered in this group are electric energy, drinking water, sewerage, and garbage collection. On the other hand, cable television services, the internet, and cellular and fixed telephony are not in the basic service group so they will have an increase in VAT. Four, household expenses. The rental or payment of rental of properties intended for housing has a fee of 0% VAT. However, household appliances and appliances will be taxed VAT. Among these goods are ovens, refrigerators, washing machines and dryers, air conditioners and fans, curtains, mattresses, electric showers, water pumps, and living and dining room furniture. Five, diesel and gasoline. National land and water transport services of passengers and cargo have 0% VAT. So passengers will continue to pay the same values for services such as buses or taxis. International cargo transport and national air cargo transport from, to, and in the province of Galapagos also has 0% VAT. However, national and international air tickets will have the VAT increase. Those who have their own vehicle, as well as companies that have a fleet of vehicles, will also have to pay more for transportation since gasoline and diesel 
have the VAT increase. With a VAT of 13%, the impact on the price of diesel and gasoline will be between almost two cents and four cents per gallon. At 15%, the impact of the price will be greater between five cents and 11 cents per gallon, depending on the type of fuel. Six, digital platforms. The digital platforms that are in the cadaster of the Internal Revenue Service or the IRS will also have an increased VAT. Among the platforms are the popular transport and package delivery applications such as Uber and Glovo. There are also applications to make online supermarket purchases such as Uber Eats. The cadaster also includes entertainment applications such as Amazon Prime, HBO, Netflix, Disney, DirecTV, and Hulu. For example, currently a Netflix 1099 plan pays a VAT of $1.32. That is to say, the total bill is $12.31 per month. With a VAT of 13%, the total bill for that plan on Netflix will cost $12.41 per month and with a VAT of 15%, it will be $12.63 per month. In this group of digital platforms, there are even the popular sports forecasting platforms such as Equabet and Cyberbet. Seven, banking services. About 60 types of financial services of banks and cooperatives will have the VAT increase, among which are withdrawals from non-bank correspondents located in businesses such as neighborhood shops and bazaars, issuance of certified checks, gasoline consumption with credit or debit cards, and issuance, replacement, or renewal of debit or credit cards for theft, loss, or deterioration. But there are also financial services that have 0% VAT, which are opening or closing of bank accounts, deposits, maintenance of accounts, consultation and withdrawals of bank accounts at the window or at ATMs to customers of the financial institution and transfers within the same bank. Eight, health and education. Medicines and health services such as consultations with general practitioners or specialists, including prepaid medicine services and health insurance have 0% VAT. Laboratory tests, hospitalization expenses, dental services, or veterinary expenses for the care of pets also do not have VAT. Education should also not increase in price for VAT since pensions have 0% fee for initial basic education until high school, undergraduate and postgraduate university education, and daycare services. However, computer and language courses will have a VAT rate increase. Nine, movies, concerts, and soccer matches. Since June 2022, tickets for public shows have 12% VAT. Therefore, tickets for events such as soccer matches, concerts, and movie tickets will now have an increase of VAT. Artistic and cultural events, which continue to have 0% VAT, are excluded from this group. According to the IRS, these are the requirements for an event to have 0% VAT. The capacity of the event site must be up to 2,000 people. It is necessary that the promoter of the event be recorded in the single registry of artists and cultural managers, the RUAC, granted by the Ministry of Culture. or Failing that, the place where the event will be held must belong to the Registry of Cultural Spaces and Infrastructures or the Registry of Audiovisual Spaces. In the latter case, the promoter must be registered with the RUAC. In addition, in the case of audiovisual spaces, such as cinemas, it should also be considered that they have no more than three screens. 10. Clothing, Image, and Personal Hygiene Clothing, shoes, wallets, jewelry, and watches will also have a VAT increase, as well as some services to improve personal image, such as haircut and hair treatments, washing and brushing hair, manicures, and the gym.
Among the personal hygiene products that will have a VAT increase are shampoo, soap, toothpaste, deodorant, creams, talcum powder, toilet paper, and shavers. On the other hand, sanitary napkins and diapers have 0% VAT since 2021. 11. Technology Among the technological products that will have a VAT increase are cell phones, desktop computers and laptops, printers, tablets, flash drives, televisions, audio players, and cameras. 12. Vehicles Cars and motorcycles will be more expensive with the increase in VAT, as well as other goods that are not a first necessity, such as cigarettes, alcoholic beverages, and perfumes. These goods, in addition to VAT, have a special consumption tax and other taxes. And 13. Toys Other products that will have a VAT increase are toys, such as dolls and balls, even video games will have a VAT increase. Now that we understand the tax increase, let's talk a little bit about why there was a discussion online about what Daniel Noboa said. And the thing about what he said is that there's a certain duality to it, at least from my point of view. But we'll talk about that in a bit. But as for the general Ecuadorian sentiment, well, most people agree that that was a very ignorant comment. In fact, I had a conversation with my Ecuadorian friend, Roberta, who has been a guest on my channel quite a few times, and this is what she had to say. I know the president has been doing some good things lately when it comes to security and stuff, but he screwed up when he said what he did on that interview for many reasons. Most Ecuadorians work throughout their lives, and still, that doesn't mean they live comfortably. A big part of the population still struggle to make ends meet. I think there are so many things he probably doesn't understand about his own people because he didn't grow up like most of us. He grew up privileged, knowing that no matter what, he didn't have to ever worry about money. And that's fine. Being rich doesn't make him a bad person. And I think some people get confused by that. However, not being empathetic towards the reality most people live in Ecuador is wrong. As the head of the country, he cannot go around saying things like work harder and you'll be able to afford this or that because people do work hard, but it's difficult to achieve a better lifestyle in a country where meritocracy doesn't exist and justice is hard to come by. Instead of commenting on things he doesn't fully comprehend on a social level, he should ask himself what he can do to improve the working or living situation for those who work honest jobs and abide by the law. Roberta's thoughts are echoed by many Ecuadorians, including a post that I saw on Instagram that gives a little bit of detail on the reality of Ecuadorians, as well as some of the ministers of Ecuador. The post is in Spanish, but I translated it and it reads as follows. No, Mr. President, we Ecuadorians do not need to work more. We already have two or three jobs. We already wake up before the sun rises and we return home on the last bus. Even so, it is not enough for us to make ends meet. It is the businessmen, a group to which you belong, who keep us in poverty. You are the ones who oppose establishing livable wages, conscious hours, and job security. We do not have enough for bread, and even worse for dessert, because millionaires like you live off of our exploitation. The reality of the country. In Ecuador, more than 2 million people eat once a day. More than 4 million work informally and earn less than the minimum wage. 27 out of every 100 Ecuadorians live in poverty with less than $3 a day. Meanwhile, your ministers, with barely a month in office, the Minister of Women and Human Rights, Ariana Tanka, asked for a vacation to spend the end-of-year festivities in Europe. Andres Gushmer, Minister of Sports, requested vacation leave to spend the end of the year in Argentina, when he had only been in office for a month. Pathetic. The President of Congress, Henry Kronfle, requested a vacation to be away for a few days. The people work hard, Mr. President. We pay the salary of your ministers, and only they have enough for dessert. 
Now, as I said earlier, I do think that there is a duality to this whole situation. Not just the comment that the president made, but also the lives of actual Ecuadorians. So first, with the president's comment, I do understand where it's coming from. And I don't think that it's coming from a place with ill intentions. You have to understand that the president has been busting his butt to try to fix the tremendous crater that was left behind by previous governments. The president himself is a busy man, but unfortunately, the fact that he's a busy man has led him to make what I believe is a blanket statement for him to believe that his government, everyone involved in it, is doing as much work as he is. Realistically, or at least from the perspective of the people, Congress is not doing the amount of work that at least President Noboa thinks that they're doing. Like the post that I read out earlier mentions, there are people taking vacations when President Noboa is out here asking people to work harder. Not only that, but a few weeks ago, there was also this whole problem with one of the congressmen sleeping during a meeting with Congress. So really, from the eyes of the people, it does look like they're not working hard enough, at least to what President Daniel Noboa is saying that normal, everyday Ecuadorian citizens should be working. But if you're willing to understand the comment and criticize the ministers and the congressmen and Daniel Noboa for making that comment about people not working hard enough, you also have to understand where that comment is coming from. You see, the other side of the argument of Ecuadorians working hard or being hard workers is that there are Ecuadorians that don't work hard. And I don't just mean Ecuadorians that don't work hard because they don't have work, but I mean Ecuadorians that don't want to work hard. You see it all the time on social media where there are posts of people who wish they were earning $1,000 or more by just sitting down and doing nothing. There are people, of course, who wish they could just be taken away by a millionaire so that way they would never have to work a day in their lives. And don't get me started on holidays because there are people here who just wish every day were a holiday. So I think that part of the reason why Daniel Noboa said that people need to work harder is because of people like that. But of course, since he did say it as a blanket statement, of course, everyone was gonna feel that it was targeted towards everyone. But the reality worldwide is that there are people who like to work hard and there are people who just don't. So regardless of whether it was or wasn't a blanket statement, you have to acknowledge that one, it was wrong, and two, there are people who don't exactly work as hard as they should be working. Now, leaving aside the Ecuadorian sentiment on this comment, let's talk about my thoughts and what I think as both an Ecuadorian and as just simply ace. Earlier, I mentioned real Ecuadorian. And what I mean by that is not the typical textbook definition of someone who either A, was born in Ecuador, or B, was born to Ecuadorian parents. No, my definition of a real Ecuadorian isn't so much someone who was born in Ecuador, but more someone who was raised in a real Ecuadorian environment. The funny thing about this definition is that I technically do have to throw myself under the bus because the reality is that I, most of my life, did not live a real Ecuadorian reality. In that same way, of course, we have to categorize everyone who lives with an excessive salary or who has not lived in this country as a not real Ecuadorian. Now, before anyone gets mad at me about that, you have to understand what exactly I mean by this whole not real Ecuadorian thing. People who were raised outside of the country, people who were born to privileged families, people who have always had excessive amounts of money, what would you know about the Ecuadorian reality? And like I said, I include myself in that because when I first got here, I had no idea what the Ecuadorian reality was, much more than what I could see from my everyday life. It has truly taken me the whole time that I've lived here, the 10 plus years that I've been living here in Ecuador, to really, really, really understand what Ecuadorians actually live through. And the only reason I actually understand it is because I've had to live through it myself. That's why I said that people who have excessive amounts of money or were born to a privileged household or raised in an environment that was not Ecuador have a different life and 
wouldn't really understand what's happening over here because you really have to live through it in order to understand it. When, when you have a day that you decide not to eat, just like, you know, save breakfast, lunch, dinner, $9-ish if you just order the simplest things. When you have a day that saving those $9 makes you think that, yeah, that was a, a good choice because I can use those $9 for something else, then you'll understand. When you have a family that you have to take care of because you're the only source of income and your income is a minimum wage that even when it goes up, it means nothing because everything else goes up, then you'll understand. When you worked hard and you felt like you did a lot that deserved a lot more than what you got, then you'll understand. A lot of these things might seem like the smallest things ever to some people because you really don't understand. That's why I think that the president, he doesn't understand that and it's very hard to explain it to him because of course I don't have any way to directly talk to him and of course if he's surrounded by people who only live through the same reality that he does, I mean he's the son of a, one of the richest people in Ecuador and he's had a privileged, a, a privileged lifestyle where he lives in, in the States and I, I lived in the States and I know what that feels like and I know why, like I said, you would never understand what's going on here until you live through it. But that's why I feel like he doesn't understand. But I also feel like I said at the beginning or like I said earlier, he doesn't say it with ill intent. He, he says it because he's working hard or he's trying to work hard to make the situation a little bit better. It's just, it's just so hard to make a situation that's already pretty bad better because there are so many things that, that are involved in that. And honestly, the raise in, in EVA, in tax, it's, it's not a bad thing. I know it's not a bad thing. I know there's no ill intention behind it because like I said, there's, it's to fix the crime problem, it's to fix the debt problem. But the reality is it's gonna affect people. People who are already working two jobs, in some cases three, in order to to try to sustain their, their lifestyle, their family. And don't let, don't let social media fool you. People have good moments. Of course they have good moments. Of course you're not gonna post yourself crying every day on, on social media because what would be the point of that? So people are gonna show good moments where they're at the beach with their friends, where it looks like they have money because they're out drinking maybe. But what's wrong with a moment of fun when every other day is just a constant, I don't even want to call it a nightmare, but it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's very hard. So we got a little emotional there and I do apologize for that. But if you did make it this far into the video, I appreciate it. And um, if you have any thoughts on anything, 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 anything that we said here today, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, I really do hope that the EVA, the raise in EVA, makes things better instead of worse. In theory, it should. And I also hope that no matter where you are, no matter who you are, that um, your situation just never gets to this point where you need a raise in, in tax in order to, to make things better. And just overall, I, I hope you have uh, an excellent life, no matter where you are.